Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. Um, for those of you who are already subscribed and have been kind of going through this process with me, thank you. Your time means the world to me. Time is precious. And the fact that you're giving some of it to me to listen to me um, is nothing short of incredibly uh, generous of you guys. So thank you so much. And for those of you who aren't subscribed and just checking me out, um, welcome. Let me know what you think. I hope you like the content and I hope that there's something to be learned from this. Um, if you do like it, please subscribe. Share it with people who you think might enjoy it as well. And I would appreciate all of that. So, uh, but today's video, I'd like to talk to you guys about keeping reptiles outside because it's not necessarily for the faint of heart. Although if done right, it's very, very safe, incredibly enriching and just absolutely mentally stimulating for both uh, the keeper and the kept. So what are we gonna talk about today? You've seen them a couple times, but today I'm gonna focus on Florida box turtles, baby. These guys are such uh, awesome little turtles, very charismatic and extremely rewarding to keep. So stay tuned. One of the things I love most about keeping reptiles is having the chance, the opportunity to see them displaying normal, natural behaviors and having them giving them a habitat this size and this complex really encourages that. I mean, this is an eight foot by eight foot pen, two feet tall, um, heavily planted, lots of logs and stuff. This is all black locusts that fell in my yard. Then they have these awesome little shelves where they can climb under. They really seem to like it and uh, it's really rewarding to watch them behave in it. But before building something like this, you do need to take some things into consideration. So one of the first things I needed to do was decide where I'm going to put this habitat. And um, I thought to myself that I would like this to have somewhat full sun uh, with some shaded properties. So I have this nice big pine tree in my backyard and underneath it is a nice area where throughout a lot of the day at least half the habitat would be exposed to full sun and the rest would be shaded. And I think this was great because it would give options for these guys. So although they live in Florida and they, they can tolerate a lot of heat and stuff, they, they tend to spend a lot of the day hidden when it's really hot. So um, having that shaded area is going to be really important to these guys. Um, the other thing I need to think about is they, they will dig. So where I'm going to put this, um, I either need to fill it up with dirt quite a bit so that they only dig down, you know, maybe, you know, six, seven inches. And I don't want them to dig under and out. Now, as it happens, there's an area in my yard that is grown up with grass, and uh, I found this out last year while building my first one, uh, is that, or two years ago, when building my first uh, outdoor habitat, it used to be part of an old driveway. So it's got asphalt underneath, about five inches down. So this kind of worked out really perfect because it's exactly where I'm gonna put this habitat um, because <laughs> they won't be able to dig through asphalt, I hope, or else they're very, very strong turtles. Uh, and it's in a perfect location where they'll have lots of choices. So uh, that's where you're gonna see here where I'm, that's what you're seeing underneath while, while I'm kind of showing you a slideshow of me building this, this habitat. So another thing to think about is predators. Um, Putting box turtles outside doesn't mean they're the only wildlife out here, and box turtles are, are prey for a lot of things. Uh, in this area, maybe birds of prey and raccoons are definitely something that would snack on a nice little box turtle because, I mean, they don't get that big. A full-grown box turtle, a Florida box turtle, I mean, rarely exceeds a pound. Um, most of mine are around 350 to 400 grams, and how do I know that? We'll check later. But that's not a big turtle. Um, definitely a snack for something. So I find it essential for my practices to put a lid on top, and not only put a lid on top, but to make sure there is a locking or latching mechanism uh, that holds that lid down as well. So that's what you're seeing underneath, and that is something I highly recommend for any outdoor setup. So once these guys are outside, how do you monitor that they're eating well and they're getting everything they need? Um, because I'm not feeding them as much outside as I, as I am inside because, well, their habitat's full of prey items that I can find them snacking on all day. Mushrooms grow in there. Um, there's little bugs that they eat. There are worms throughout the soil in there and they kind of consume that right now. It doesn't mean I don't feed, I still feed them, but um, I don't feed them as much. So what I find the easiest way to keep up and make sure that they are 
um, maintaining their health is to get regular weights on them. So I get a monthly weight on these guys, and which is what I'm doing uh, in the video below. Uh, it's kind of fun to make sure I get eyes on them, get a good health check and all that, and uh, make sure that they're gaining weight. Now, it also can indicate um, maybe whether they're gravid or maybe whether they lost uh, or laid some eggs. Because when you see a quick 20 gram drop, um, sometimes that means there's eggs that's been laid when everybody else looks great. Uh, or it also means you need to pay a little more attention and maybe she's just not eating as much as the others. But weights are a very important part of keeping animals, uh, especially reptiles. And I would encourage you to get uh, a good number of weights. With turtles and tortoises, it's probably a little easier to get more frequent weights than with uh, other serpents and saurians and stuff. So, uh, But it is important and it is a good gauge of health. Good is coming to warn the others. Look out! He's getting weights today. Oh, my favorite girl. You also really need to pay attention to the weather in your area because most likely you're keeping something outdoors that isn't native to your area. For instance, I live in Ohio and I have Florida box turtles, terrapin bowri. Now they're not necessarily acclimated to Ohio weather. In fact, if I kept them out year round, they would most assuredly perish. So there are times of the year when there's not much to think about, um, unless there's a big storm coming through and you're worried that your, that your build isn't gonna hold up. Or occasionally we have some really low temperatures, um, even in the summer or right before or after summer, and I may need to bring those guys in for the night and put them back out the next morning. You need to pay attention to that, as well as, you know, sometimes it's just really hot and dry here. Um, so I need to, you know, mist them down, shower them down, and make sure that they have the humidity they need and that their water bowls are properly topped off and, and things like that. Um, so it's definitely made me um, way more cognizant of our local weather here since I've had animals outside. Well, guys, that's it for this week's video. Thank you for sticking around and watching. I hope. Uh, I was able to get across some information that's good, um, but remember, when putting animals outside, it is solely your responsibility to make sure their needs are met and to make sure that these guys are safe and happy. Um, this girl was just out walking around because it just rained here, uh, which is another cool aspect of keeping them outside as she understands what rain systems are and feels that rain, you know, that's pretty cool in my book, but thanks again and uh, I'll see you next time.